So today, Emmanuel Macron said that France said that rather Ukraine and Russia will at some point have to negotiate an end to the war. The French president made those comments as he left Romania today for Moldova, which is the next stop on his tour of countries bordering Ukraine. And there's been much speculation as well that Macron will use this trip to visit Ukraine itself. Well, joining me now is our foreign editor, Armin Georgian. And Armin, um, Macron's rather controversial comments earlier on before this trip, talking about not humiliating Russia, are very much following him as he moves around the region, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, they've been a sort of cloud over, over him for the last week, actually, since he first made those comments, of course, setting off a storm of criticism, not just in Ukraine, but also in Poland, in the Baltic states, uh, to some extent among politicians in Scandinavia as well. So it's it's been something that's really followed him around, as, as you've said. Uh, there was uh, an attempt, I think, by him to at least partly clarify what he meant uh, by not humiliating Russia. He was asked about this, not surprisingly, at the press conference with uh, the Romanian president a bit earlier. Let's listen to uh, Macron on that issue. At a given point in time, when we will have helped the Ukrainian people to resist as much as possible, when Ukraine will have won, and the fighting will have stopped, we must negotiate. The Ukrainian president and other leaders must negotiate with Russia. As Europeans, we will be sitting at this table, making sure there are security guarantees, because it's our continent. That's the reality. So interesting, he does drop that phrase, when Ukraine will have won. But I think it's fair to say in that soundbite, that clip, uh, the emphasis is not on Ukraine winning. And just before he says Ukraine will have won, he says we, we will have helped the Ukrainian people to res resist as much as possible. That doesn't sound as quite the same thing as winning. And then, of course, he puts the emphasis on negotiating how one day uh, uh, Ukraine uh, will have to negotiate with Russia. So overall, I'm not sure that he's really moved the needle that much. Uh, from the controversy of a week ago, as I said. And really, it's clear that he still sees this uh, war somewhat differently from uh, people in Poland, uh, the Baltics, some of the Scandinavian countries, and certainly in Ukraine itself. Well, this is, in theory, a two-day trip. He's not going to Ukraine officially, as far as we know. So what else should we be looking out for, listening for, during uh, his comments today in Moldova? I think we'll have to try and uh, sort of read between the lines, if we can, of what is said about Moldova's application to join the European Union. Uh, that will be an issue that will come up uh, when he talks to uh, President Maya Sandu, who he's actually hosted three times in Paris since February. So this is a growing, a, a more close political relationship that's growing between France and Moldova. But the question is, what sort of a deal will Moldova get? Because first of all, this week, we have two important things happening. Firstly, the European Commission will give it its opinion on uh, how the three EU applications should proceed. That's to say Moldova, Georgia and Ukraine. And secondly, there's this pretty important summit at the end of uh, next week when the, uh, the, the EU heads of state and government will actually take this further. And the question is, will there be a multi-speed Europe? And if so, who's in the slow lane? Who's in the fast lane? Will Moldova be treated exactly the same as Georgia and Ukraine? It's a bit of a political minefield. So I think we'll have to try and try and unpack that if we get some, uh, some statements about uh, EU membership, as we probably will at some point later in the day. I'm a Georgian for now. Thanks very much.